Um, do you recognize how beautiful people are? Like, just take a second to look around the room. If you're online and you're, you can just look at your arm, look at your hand. <laughs> but do you recognize how beautiful beings are? Really how beautiful we are. How amazing. What expressions of light, of God consciousness we are. And do you look at yourself, and can you look at yourself and see how beautiful you are? There are a lot of things we put on top of this beauty in life, are there not, that make us have a difficult time focusing on the beauty. But could you argue the possibility that if we removed all of those stories, all of those things, everyone is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, amen? That's why in unity, when we have a baby born, a baby is here right before all the stories, right? Before all the little, well, when that person reacts like this, and then that really makes me like that. Well, uh, well, this is what happened. Oh my gosh, all this stuff in my life, uh, da, da, right? A baby comes in without a story. And in unity, we rather than have a, a baptism where we remove the sin and remove the bad and we, we bless the baby, we actually have a different kind of ceremony. We have a baby christening, a celebration of that life, recognizing that that child is born good. That that child is born as an expression of God and an expression of light. And that in fact, if we can behold that child without the story for that child's whole life, without the story that may come, then we're beholding what we call the Christ presence, the enlightened state of consciousness. And that, in fact, is our duty, is our job, is our path, is our calling, and is our unity practice. That light that is the Christ light that is so recognizable in a child is a light that does not go away over time. Never, ever, ever. No matter what kind of stories, what kind of thoughts, what kind of possibilities we put on top of that story, it never goes away, nor does it pow its power decrease. It is always right here, sitting here, awaiting, awaiting our awareness, our receptivity of the knowing that I am here, that this expression of light is the true self. In the song that Steve wrote, I love the part where it says, I just caught it, I've heard that song a million times, but this time, for the first time, I heard it again and I heard a different possibility. I heard the line that says, there are 100 billion stories in a little day on earth. There are 100 billion stories in a little day on earth, aren't there? Think about that, just really get into the woo-woo of thinking, okay, one day on earth, if I was, you know, um, like those films, um, what are those, you know, those films where, you know, God gets to, like, talk and, oh, you used to watch them. Oh, God? Remember those? Like, and, and all the other ones where, you know, there's someone that gets to embody God and God gets to hear everything. I mean, just go there for a second and imagine if you could hear all the little stories on one little day on earth. Oh, yeah. Some of you are like, get out, get out, I don't want it. There's some good stories, right? And there are some other stories. Author Richard Paul Evans said this, the most important story we will ever write in life is our own, not with ink, but with our choices. Not with ink, but with our choices. Those choices, those possibilities that we choose to give life to and to create. And on this journey of being a spiritual being, of being a being of light embodied in human form, we do seem to have some choices, don't we? There do seem to be a lot of possibilities. And we are beautiful, beautiful creatures that sometimes get caught up in the magnitude and the difficulty of navigating through all of these possibilities and all of these choices. Sometimes we get stuck, sometimes we get excited, but this life is made from exploring choices and possibilities, exploring what we can create, what we can presence, what we can accept or adapt to. So have you asked yourself the question, among all these choices in life, all these possibilities, what is mine to do? What is mine to do? As spiritual beings, what is our call? 
Our tendency is to focus on completing things, on results, right? Just breathe into that question, what is mine to do? Did you get anything? I mean, I didn't give you much time to presence it, but, but maybe you got something. Maybe something came to you like, I'm to be an author, I'm to do this, I'm to create that, I'm to, right? You might have had a flush of ideas that came in. We have a tendency to think about when we ask that question, what is mine to do, to think about things in the external. Things that we can build, things that we can act on, things that we can create. The tendency to focus on doing over being. What comes to the mind is often worldly things, these doings. But what is another possibility of what could come to mind when I ask the question, what is mine to do? Our job is, as spiritual beings, as beings of God, is to focus on our area of greatest dominion and to exercise our God potential there. So is my area of greatest dominion the outer world and the effects? Is my area of greatest dominion the results? Well, you don't have to live long to recognize that even in unity, where we teach my mind and my thoughts create my reality, even in unity, it's hard to think that I can create everything outside of me. Because sometimes life happens, right? Sometimes we go, well, and, and we have different you know, ways we process this. Well, maybe in my highest and highest and highest of self, I chose this, right? But life sometimes gives us things that it feels like we didn't choose. And you would think, well, if I was awake, I never would have chosen that. Or I never would have created this. Or I never would have had that happen. Yet still, we tend to focus on the external when we think of what is mine to do. We think of building things on earth. Well, do you take anything with you when you go? Anything. So, so we don't take our jobs. Do you take a PhD with you? Do you take your house with you? Do you take your family picture with you? Do you take any of these things with you? No, nothing, not a thing. Not a thing of the external comes with us, right? Not that we know of. Yet. So then why this focus on the results and on the external? If you could imagine what we might take with us, I heard a few murmurs, what might we take with us? Love, consciousness. Would it make sense to think we take with us only what we become? We take with us only what we become. So if I can become it, if it can become in me, then it is me, then it is part of this life that expresses as me and that only those things are transferred, only those things expand, only those things can be carried with us. Are we re ready to release the focus on the outer and on the external? Because when we bring that attention inward, we are following the sacred teachings of the master we are following sacred scripture that says, do not build up earthly things, but build up that which is of the spirit. Build up the consciousness. And in that consciousness, you will find the kingdom. In that consciousness, you will find that realm where all is given, and that realm where we have potential to exercise our greatest dominion. Are we willing to work consciously with spending and dedicating so much of our lives dedicated to material manifestation or to thought substance? They don't exclude each other because thought substance comes as an expression, a natural outworking, a natural effect of thought substance. 
But you cannot gain thought substance by pulling at, sub, but pulling at experience, by pulling at material, by pulling at matter. The greatest stress of our time, I think, is the confusion over what is ours to do, what is yours to do. And that we focus on the outer results rather than the inner process. We focus on the effects. And there is so much pressure to choose, to sort, to do. But if we are willing to enter a different state of consciousness, we may experience this possibility. The possibility that if I focus on my beingness, if I focus on my consciousness and how I show up, there is a great universal doer, there is a law, a principle in action that pulls substance together, that pulls form together in mighty ways that are beyond my capacity to do it if I were to look at just manipulating the outer circumstances. What we can control or have dominion over is how we show up in our world, not everything that happens. In scripture it says, create in me a new heart. We're also told to be born again. There's a lot of concepts about a clean slate and starting over, forgetting to remember. Forget to remember. How many things can we forget, forgive, let go of, so that we can remember what is there, what is born, so that we can remember ourselves as that perfect, pure infant child, not needing to earn anything, to be worthy, not needing even to have a story, to be fully loved. Create in me a new heart. Are we willing to take a journey of removing our programming, unwinding our thoughts, unraveling ourselves to arrive at the true self. We're here to experience this true self, no? We're here to experience our true worth and to behold that true worth in each other. Albert Einstein said, the true value of a human being can be found in the degree to which he has attained liberation from self. The true value can be attained when we find liberation from self. That's the ego self, the limited self, the form self, this form self. I watched a film the other day, um, the title of it, it's that one with the, all the, um, the guys in Las Vegas. La what is it called, Las Vegas? Well, it's about these great friends that are now grandpa age, right? And they, are working through their own spiritual journeys, through this process of going to Las Vegas to have a bachelor party for one of them that is getting married. And what you get to presence, what you get to process in that film is these men reflecting on their entire lives, reflecting on their now moment and unwinding their stories, releasing any attachment, releasing what things are supposed to look like, releasing and forgiving what may have happened in the past, what the past looked like, and looking at birthing a new way of how do I show up? How do I show up for this moment? And you get to go on this little journey of how do I show up, but you can see in the film how over a lifetime we accumulate stories how even culturally shared in families, we accumulate roles and stories that keep the spirit down. But if we are willing to liberate the self from all of those outer circumstances, if we are willing to liberate the mind, we find that each moment is sourced with everything that's needed and that life is really about how we show up for it. There's a poem by Kipling named If. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowance for their doubting too. 
If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop to build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of a distance run, Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Mm -hmm. I share that writing because there is so much in it, is there not? So much in it. And it talks about life, it talks about that idea of coming into oneself, growing into spiritual maturity, or even just growing into human maturity, becoming a man from being a son, being a child. Is that not the same spiritual journey we have of growing up our spiritual selves so that we all are expressions and aware that we are expressions of the one sun, the one light, the one that we call by so many names, that we are in tune and connected to, that beingness we call God, that essence we call God, that yes, we see all around us, but is known within a being. Are we willing to pull back the tentacles of focusing on the world outside of us and allow that focus to be created through the power that is within us. Letting that power within us direct that outer focus, direct it in such ways that even we are amazed at the work we can do, at the life we can have, at the giving we can give, at the magnitude at which we can live and be present to this life that happens not through holding on and not through building up, but it happens through releasing and letting go. Because our dominion is within the world of cause, the spiritual world, and our focus is on that when it is fully and completely on that. We find that we have ways of living that lead to living abundantly, loving abundantly, playing powerfully. Victory is not in the nouns, the what I did, who, what, where, the person, the place, the thing. Spiritual victory is not in these nouns. It is not in these things. Spiritual victory is in the verbs. It's in how we show up, how, not what. The movement, the action, because what we become is what is real. It's taught by the master teacher. It's taught in sacred scriptures throughout the world. So create in me 
a new heart. Create in me that beingness where all of the external flows from this state of consciousness of how I show up for this moment. Namaste. Namaste.